Who was Usman Dan Fodio? What was his role in the Sokoto Caliphate? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. Please subscribe to this channel if you've not yet done so and click on your notification button so we can always let you know when we have new episodes. Thank you. Now, the Sokoto Caliphate was another major power which evolved in sub-Saharan Africa. The Fulani who constituted the Caliphate were migratory people. They are believed to have moved from Mauritania and settled in Futatoro, Futajalon, and other areas of West Africa. By the 14th century, they had become predominantly Muslim and embarked on jihads, on so-called infidels, um, around the 1670s. They succeeded in establishing several states as a result of these jihads, including the imamate of Futatoro, Futajalon, and um, others. The most important of the states which the Fulani founded was the Sokoto Caliphate, which was established by Usman Danfudio in 1804. Usman Danfudio was an ethnic Fulani who found himself living in a predominantly non-Muslim area, which falls in what is uh, now northern Nigeria. That was the area where he, he lived. The area now falls in uh, northern uh, Nigeria. Though some people in the area were Muslims, others at the time practiced traditional uh, beliefs. Usman Danfodio succeeded in accusing the Hausa leadership of the area of practicing an impure version of Islam and of being morally corrupt. He then launched a series of jihads among a population that was already restless because they were disconcerted with their um, leaders who were imposing high taxes on them. Now the jihads were highly successful and quickly swept over northern areas of um, most of uh, the, the, uh, the landmass that falls under Nigeria, uh, Republic of Bene, and, uh, and Cameroon. Now, Sokoto was established as the uh, capital of the Caliphate. Um, Usman Danfodio was eventually succeeded by his son, Muhammad Bilu. Now, the Sokoto Caliphate was one of the largest 19th century states in sub-Saharan Africa. And for most of the 19th century, it dominated most of the northern parts of not just uh, of present-day Nigeria and uh, uh, the Western, uh, Western Africa, the northern areas. Now, the, the Caliphate, reigned over the region and brought other states and peoples under its authority. The, the caliphate emerged as a result of several unrest in Hausa land. And like I said, the people were already dissatisfied with their leaders who were taxing them um, heavily. So, they, so there were a lot of unrest in Hausa land and this allowed Usman Danfodio's jihads uh, to succeed. And according to Mori Last, the Fulani jihadists regarded themselves as reformers. The defeat of the Hausa states brought an end to the Hausa dynasties and in their place made a powerful empire or caliphate, and they, which like I said would had its headquarters in, uh, in Sokoto. With the establishment of the Sokoto Caliphate, the already existing uh, political system in Hausa land was fused into the uh, Fulani-led administration. 
Now, the caliphate was divided into two provinces for administrative uh, uh, convenience. The western province had its head headquarters at Guandu, and the eastern province had its own uh, headquarters at Sokoto. The, the caliphate was then subdivided into emirates led by emirs. The Sokoto Caliphate system was modeled to a, uh, to a large extent after the Caliphate system in the Arabian Peninsula. So it was a theocracy in that it was guided by religion. At the head of the Caliphate was the Caliph who was the Amir al muminin which is Arabic uh, meaning commander of the faithful. He had a duty as both the religious and political leader. His duty was to select emirs who took charge of the outlying uh, states of the caliphate. In principle, the position of emir was not hereditary, like the position of uh, kings in uh, previous empires. The emir was to be chosen for his personal piety towards Allah, and neither his office nor his person was supposed to be sacred. These emirates, like the new caliphate, were administered according to Muslim laws, uh, the Sharia. At its peak, the Sokoto Caliphate flourished economically and was actively involved in trade. The caliphate had significant trade across the Trans-Saharan um, routes. Um, again, sadly, one of the major commodities that the caliphate traded in was slaves. This was likely possible because of the combined attacks of Muslim states under the caliphate on so-called infidel uh, states under the uh, under their uh, assumption that because they were non-Muslims, um, they were infidels. As a result of these attacks, war captives were taken and turned into slaves. As such, it, it can be said that in much the same way that Christianity encouraged the trans uh, transatlantic slave trades, Islam also greatly influenced the trading patterns of the trans-Saharan slave trade. Slavery remained a large part of the economy of the, of the caliphate, so much so that slaves were a major form of currency. Although some of the economy of the caliphate was um, based on uh, agriculture, um, such as agricultural farms, um, they were even these agricultural farms were largely sustained through slave labor. Apart from slave uh, trade and uh, agriculture, the economy of the Sokoto Caliphate also depended on taxes, which were imposed according to Sharia law. The establishment of the caliphate had tremendous impact, not only on the northern areas of West Africa, especially northern Nigeria, but the entire geographic area um, that later became known as Nigeria. The Hausa states which had existed before the caliphate, uh, which were now emirates, were for the first time brought under a single political organization. One uh, interesting fact about the caliphate was that religion played such a powerful role that it did not need to re maintain a standing army. Compared with the um, states of similar uh, size, the Sokoto Caliphate did not have or need military force to keep law and order. Islam, being the state religion, was more of a social cement uh, for the emirates under the caliphate. 
And uh, for a while, even without the military coercion, the Emirates towed the expected line and did not revolt against the, the Caliphate. The Caliphate also used diplomacy effectively with well-established um, correspondence. They had a well-established correspondence with um, Morocco and Tripoli. The Caliphate also tried to maintain peaceful relations with other Muslim states in, in, in North Africa. Like other major empires in pre-colonial Africa, uh, in pre-colonial African society, Sokoto soon started facing a number of challenges which marked the prelude to its decline. The physical expanse of the Caliphate was the most serious of the challenges because the Emirates started taking advantage of the Caliphate's lack of a strong military base to organize revolts. Rivalries among the Emirates also encouraged um, alliances with states outside the Caliphate. So gradually, the authority of the Caliphate over the Emirates started waning. The growing influence of the Europeans in the second half of the 19th century further encouraged the Emirates to deal independently of the Caliphate. With the beginning of the colonial rule, the Sokoto Caliphate soon lost all major influence and fell to the French and British um, colonial armies. The autonomy of the Sokoto Caliphate eventually ended in 1903, when the British annexed northern Nigeria. Thank you very much for watching this episode of the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please. Don't forget to send your comments and questions to our community page. And please share our videos. See you next time.